history of the Big Bang. Okay, what other events take place after that? So, so far we have the forces are splitting off, the universe is inflating immediately. Uh, now what's happening? At 10 to the minus 6 seconds after the Big Bang, and the temperature has cooled down to 10 to the 13 Kelvin, protons and antiprotons, electrons and anti-electrons anti are called positrons, so that's a short word of saying anti-electron. Proton, anti-proton, electron, anti-electron, which is a positron. So what's happening? The original energy that was compacted into that little space was just in the form of pure energy. That energy, since it's cooling, it's starting to produce particles, what we call particles. Okay? How do you produce particle from energy? Are, are they the same thing or are they completely different? So we used to think that a particle, that matter, was very different than energy because energy you can't see. Electromagnetic energy you can't see. You see? And particles you can touch, you can feel. We used to think those two things were completely different. Who opened our eyes to the fact that energy and matter are actually one and the same thing? His first name starts with A. Last name starts with E. Albert Einstein again, right? His equation energy E equals mc squared, right? Energy and matter are the same thing. So the universe starts out pure energy, and then once it's cooling, that energy that's expanding, part of it gets transformed into matter and antimatter. You see? So that doesn't defy the laws of the universe. That's exactly equivalent to the laws of the universe. Energy and matter are equivalent. See here? You have pure energy. You see? Radiation creates particle and antiparticle. Pew. Particle, antiparticle. Then what could happen is that the particle and antiparticle can come and hit each other again. Particle and antiparticle will annihilate each other, creating radiation, back to radiation. See that? So the universe at the beginning was doing this constantly. It's expanding. And all this heat and energy, it's producing particle, and the particle, antiparticle are annihilating and producing back energy. And then the energy is producing antiparticle, antiparticle, annihilating, producing uh, energy again. Have you ever thought to yourself, what if the universe kept producing particle and antiparticle at the same rate, and those had kept annihilating each other at the same rate, what would have happened? the universe will still be pure energy, constantly producing particle, antiparticle, particle, antiparticle, and uh, we would never exist. Galaxies would never exist. Okay? So what would have had to happen in order for matter to exist? The rate of production of matter needs to be a little bit higher than the rate of production of antimatter. Okay? This is... Very, very hard to understand how this happened, okay? And they've understood it. It's a very, it's a deep physics equation and stuff you need to know, okay? So what happened was the universe produced particle, antiparticle, but it produced particle at a little faster rate than an antiparticle, okay? So when they collided back, annihilated each other, there was more particles left. And then those particles started building up, building up, building up, and then they eventually became galaxies, okay? And those are galaxies, and we are made of particles, you see? Okay, so... Okay, so this kind of is a nice picture to see also. You see here, the inflation is happening. And then what's happening? Protons and antiprotons are forming. Electrons and positrons annihilate each other. And then, and then the other events happen. I'm going to put this up on, the, on this 
board has a transparency so that we can see it as we're going through the notes. So it's this bottom one here. It's the same thing, basically. See the temperature of the universe. You see what's happening? It's cooling. 10 to the 13 Kelvin, 10 to the 12 Kelvin, 10 to the 7 Kelvin, 3,000 Kelvin. You see? And then w these are major events that are happening. OK, so now we can go to the notes and go together with this. At, ten, at about the time of 10 minutes after the Big Bang, what happens? That's roughly here. That's not that long if you consider, but a lot has happened in 10 minutes. The universe is now probably a pretty sizable size like this, you know. It's cooled dramatically down to 10 to the seventh Kelvin, 10 million Kelvin. See this, you could say this 10 million Kelvin. It's still hot, but much cooler than what it began. And then an important event is happening at that time. Some hydrogen fuses into helium. You see here, uh, look what's happening. Uh, you got, you see here the red looking ones here, the pink looking ones. And then you have some black looking ones. You see here the, in the picture, this is black. And then this, these are ones are the red ones. And then this red is by itself. These blues are by itself. And then you have red, red, red. And then you have a black one, black one. This is pretty, the reason I'm going over it kind of slowly is pretty interesting what's happening here. So by about 10 minutes after the Big Bang, what has happened? The red ones stand for what? Starts with P, protons. You've, po you've formed a significant amount of protons. The little blue ones stand for what? These are green ones, I should say. Green ones stand for little tiny electrons. And then the black ones stand for what? These black ones that are uh, uh, fused into the proton here. The black one stands for neutron. That's the basic building block of any atom. Proton, electron, neutron. <laughs> you see, without that you can't have life. So in 10 minutes, the universe has already created the basic building block. Electron, proton, neutron. Not only that, two protons and two neutrons have come together and said, hey, we like to be together. They fuse together. Two protons, two, another proton, a neutron, and a neutron. What's so special about that? Eventually, that's going to become the nucleus of what atom? Two protons, two neutrons. It's going to become the nu nucleus of the... Helium atom, you see? The nucleus of the hydrogen atom is what? Just hydrogen. Uh, I mean, sorry. The nucleus of the hydrogen atom is just one proton by itself, you see? But for the, to create helium, you need two protons, two neutrons fusing together. So in 10 minutes, you've created what's to become the nucleus of the helium atom, and then you've created protons and electrons. After that, not much happens for a long time. The universe just does more of the same thing, OK? Now, I believe your notes say here about a million, but they've refined this number now. So I try to change my numbers to reflect the latest numbers. Um, so what we believe is about 380,000 years after the Big Bang, the next major event took place. So you see the universe is growing, cooling, 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 cooling. It's now down to 3,000 Kelvin. So that's very cold comparatively to what it started with. The average temperature of the universe is 3,000 Kelvin. 
the first generation of Adam's form. Okay, and that's in the picture right here. Okay. You see here in the picture, you've got red one and a blue one going around it. Proton and an electron going around it. You see, in 10 minutes, you, you, you just had electrons by themselves, protons by themselves. The electron wasn't going around the proton. You see? The electron goes around the proton. Oh, man, that's an important event. You have now formed the hydrogen atom. And if you form the hydrogen atom, what's so good about that? You can eventually form stars from that, galaxies and stars. You see? And now look at this other picture, black, black, red, red. Two electrons are going around it, two electrons. So you've got the nucleus of the helium atom, right? It took these many years for two electrons to figure out, hey, we can go around it, OK? You have now formed the helium atom itself. Two electrons going around two protons and two neutrons, OK? So the Big Bang is giving to us which two elements after 380,000 years? It's giving us uh, hydrogen and helium, OK? It's also giving us a little bit of lithium, too the third element. The rest of those elements in the periodic table are made in the cores of stars. Okay. So then what happens? This event is known as recombination. This is called recombination. Up to this moment, radiation dominated the energy of the universe. So in other words, what that means is before this event, because atoms didn't exist, most of the energy in the universe was in the form of pure energy. It was just energy, energy, radiation. But now, after that, came the dominance of matter. Because atoms formed, you started forming atoms. And the universe became, before, before, this, uh, before this event, the universe was opaque. Because what would happen was the energy would go and come back and reflect off itself, you see? Once atoms formed, you see here the radiation was free to escape. It was free to escape, and the universe became what's known as transparent. So up to this moment, radiation dominated the energy of the universe, and the universe was opaque. After recombination, matter dominated the energy of the universe, and the radiation was free to escape. Universe became transparent. Okay, what does that mean in terms of us? Therefore, the farthest that we can see into the past is one million years after the Big Bang, or since I've corrected it, 380,000 years into the Big Bang. So remember earlier in the semester I said, the further you look into the past, the further you see into the past uh, uh, of the universe. But if we want to actually look in at the Big Bang happening, let's say we want to keep looking farther, farther away, we want to actually see the Big Bang happening. We can't. Because during the first 380,000 years of the universe, the universe was opaque. It means it's not a see-through object. So you can't look, 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 and actually see the Big Bang. It's closed. You can only see any object forming after the recombination event, after 380,000 years. So the universe doesn't want us to see its beginnings. OK? So. Let's see here. Uh, you see here? The energy of the universe, this is the temperature, the temperature of the universe. It's cooling, it's cooling, it's cooling, it's cooling. Radiation dominates the energy of the universe until we get to the recombination event. After that, matter dominates the energy of the universe. Why? Because the first atoms formed then, you see, hydrogen, helium. And then galaxies began forming after that, and then we have today, the dominance of matter. At about t equals 0.3 billion years, I believe this one is also different than what your notes say, that means about 300 million years, you see? 380,000 years, matter begins dominating. At 300 million years, or 0.3 billion years, Galaxies and stars begin forming. 
So it's not that much longer after the recombination event. These are actual pictures. See, there's a little galaxy here, a tiny little galaxy here. We're looking into the past, you see? And we're seeing an actual galaxy forming. Arrows indicate galaxies beginning to form 13.4 billion years ago. See, that's how far into the past we're seeing. Now, when did the Big Bang happen? 13.7 billion years ago. So that means 0.3 billion years has passed. 300 million, 300 million years have passed, and already galaxies are beginning to form from the hydrogen that the Big Bang gave us. You see? Clusters of galaxies formed 11.2 billion years ago. So that means it took about two and a half to three billion years. Massive clusters of galaxies began forming. You see? And one final thing to look at, and then it will be good to take our break there. Um, Okay, on the other chart that I have you print out, that's what this thing is talking about. It's talking about the density of the universe as a function of time since the Big Bang. Time since the Big Bang. So this is when the Big Bang is happening. 100 years after the Big Bang, 10,000 years after the Big Bang, million years after the Big Bang. Uh, <coughs> yeah, this is uh, 10,000 years. This is a million years after the Big Bang, 100 million years after the Big Bang. This is 10 billion years after the Big Bang. You see? It's the uh, time. So look at what the chart is showing you. This is the density of radiation, radiation density. Notice the radiation density is larger than the matter density. Radiation dominates. You see? Then, right there, important event, matter radiation cross point, crossover point. Okay. That means m recombination has happened. Atoms started forming. When atoms started forming, matter becomes more dense. You see? Matter dominates the universe. Radiation is going down. You see? Now look at this straight line. This is the dark energy density. Dark energy density remains constant. That means all throughout the universe, there's this thing permeating all the universe. It's called dark energy. We don't know what really it is, but it's the dark force kind of from Star Wars, you know, dark force. It's permeating, and it's not changing much, okay? When this time approaches, the, the radiation energy is less than the dark energy, okay? Oh, look what happens here. Even matter energy is less than the dark energy, okay? So that, when is that? Uh, this is one billion years. This is six, seven billion years, uh, eight billion years. So. At about 8 billion years after the Big Bang, something like that, uh, basically dark energy took over even matter energy. You see here? Dark energy took over matter. What's that going to do? It's going to cause the universe to accelerate. It's pushing on the space. So after that event, we believe the universe started its acceleration phase, the dark energy. Okay, the, the, when the dark energy dominated. So you see you have radiation dominated, matter dominated, dark energy dominated. We, we now live in the dark energy dominated era, okay? <laughs>